Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about the 4th of July 2024 update that was just shown earlier this morning over on Stove. Because, well, some of it's pretty exciting, some of it not so exciting, and a couple of things I also want some clarification on. So, without any further ado, let's just jump into it. First up, we have the one minute summary here. I will pull it up over here so you guys can see it. I like the song that is actually here in this trailer. I we'll talk no about that in a second. But yeah, so Cerise gets a new skin. It is one of the things Pleased here. To meet you. Um, I'm sure we can be of great it's actually uh, a little bit weird that uh, this uh, character is getting a skin. Like, I know this was a requested skin, but Cerise hasn't been good in a very long time. So if this skin is going to be something that we're going to be getting... Uh, probably should buff this character in the next balance patch or very, very soon. Because straight up, Cerise just isn't really used anywhere outside of pain for Sir Maroi. So this is uh, a bit puzzling. Who knows? I believe this week is supposed to be a balance patch uh, on Friday. Uh, and if that is the case, well, then obviously you can come back here. Stay tuned to this channel and we'll talk about that in a couple of days. Also, uh, somebody pointed out to me how insane her eyebrows are. And I literally can't unsee it now that somebody pointed that out to me earlier this morning. Help to one another. So you'll see, we'll get this gifts from Luna login, which is basically, uh, it's I believe 600 mystic medals, uh, a five star, a Luna skin, a free Luna and some Mulligoras is what this entails. Also speak of Luna, the song that apparently I assume that is playing here during this trailer is uh, Newman Luna's theme, which I believe you get starting tomorrow with the patch after clearing episode four of moonlight theater always good to get some new music from epic seven hall of trials revamp this is actually one of the things that we'll talk about in the patch notes in a second uh because it comes with two new exclusive equipments one for arbiter Vildred, one for briar which is area uh loving eyes of the moonlight not really sure what this is i'm going to assume it's uh something else um like maybe uh, an extra game mode or story or something. But yeah, this right here. Equipment, hero, inventory, expansion. So Lucent Azure has won his campaign. Uh, if you guys don't know Lucent, good friend of the channel here. Uh, pretty much crusading on every single video that he made to increase the hero inventory limit. Because for someone like him who has every character in the game, they're all leveled, they're all friendship 10, they're all geared. He actually couldn't take advantage of the game's systems uh, and was petitioning to get this changed. We made a video about it here on the channel. Glad to see that that got changed. 50 is kind of small though, I'll be real with you. Like, couldn't you have done like 380, maybe 400? You know, that way you don't have to update it again in like a year. So. Uh, new rotation is coming up. Uh, for those of you who are newer, I would not recommend pulling on any of these characters because there is most likely going to be a limited coming very, very soon. Uh, if for some reason you have the itch and want to summon, uh, I think Destina is the best character here uh, or Ludwig if you're a cleaver. But uh, I would not summon on either, any of these characters. There's definitely limited banners coming soon. And then obviously Newman Luna comes out tomorrow which I'm very, very excited for. So let's jump back over here <clears throat> to the actual patch. As you can see, Newman Luna tomorrow. Pretty excited about this. I'm pretty sure this might be the most anticipated unit probably of the entire year because, well, it's Luna, a Moonlight five-star version of Luna. Luna being, of course, probably the highest selling banner in Epic Seven history or very close to it. Uh, is she good? A lot of people have asked me this since my impressions videos. Do I think she's broken? I've had some people even claim that uh, I was insane for not thinking she's broken. We'll find all of that out tomorrow. Uh, I will have a stream up tomorrow where I will be pulling for Luna and we will be testing her and figuring out if she's good. So uh, if you want to check that out, you can come back here on the channel, get subscribed up, check the live tab tomorrow. There will be a, uh, a video page created for it, like a banner that you can find. You can also check me out over on my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. So we'll find out together just how good or how broken New Moon Luna is. New Moonlight Theater. Like I said, that track I believe you heard in the trailer here is where the spear points, which you get for completing act four 
which you'll be able to see starting tomorrow. Uh, and here we go. Hall of Trials revamp. New boss added. So we have a challenge mode now for Hall of Trials. As you can see, Rampaging Abyssal Euphine challenge mode will be activated. Right? And now if we scroll down here, there's a UI update to let you know that Abyssal is the boss. And then here we go. Challenge mode. The level of difficulty is much higher than the challenge mode of Hall of Trials, but you can obtain a higher score as well. So, as you can see here, here are the rewards that you can get, right? Before, you would just get, you know, Wisdom's Gaze, which is what you used for exclusive equipment. Now, you can get Fate's Gaze also as a reward. And here's the problem, right? So, you still get your Wisdom Gazes like before, but here's Fate's Gaze, which is what you get for the new game mode, All right? You get 120, which is enough to get three exclusive equipments. If you are in the top three players in the world, if you're in the top 100 players in the world, you get enough for two of the new exclusive equipment. If you're in the top 5% of all players, you get enough for a whopping one exclusive equipment. And keep in mind, they still are subject to RNG, like a actual exclusive equipment. Um... If you're in the top 10%, you can get one after two weeks. If you're in the top 20%, you can get one after two weeks. Same thing here with the top 30. But uh, if you're like a casual player or a newer player, um, you can go kick rocks because you're not going to be able to get a exclusive equipment for several weeks to a month. Yikes. So uh, this is a really um, not desirable change. This is kind of bad if i'm being honest with you like basically saying that here's some new buffs that you wanted for characters like arbiter vildred and briar which is and only the top five percent of players get to enjoy those changes is honestly rubbish and i don't know what the hell they were thinking with this system you like one thousand percent i think should probably get them other ways like unless you get them for clearing a specific you know, grade, like, the first time you get triple S+, plus, you get some of these uh, Fates Gazes, and then you get additional ones based on performance afterwards, that would be fine. But if it's just literally the, the latter, hmm, no, nah, that does not sit right with me, and I will fight with every fiber of my being to get that overturned, because that is not a good look at all uh, for newer players. So, let's talk about the exclusive equipments themselves. So, first up, Arbiter Vildred got Archdemon's Eye, 14% attack. Pretty good. I mean, he's just a DPS. That's kind of what he's there to do. Right now, he doesn't really have the uh, best damage numbers. That's kind of the problem with him. So, you can see here, Dark Contract. When revived, Dark Contract's effect grants Archdemon's Might, which is an undispellable buff. And since he'll be reviving with it, like, you can't unbuffable him. And Archdemon's Might increases his attack by 30% and Evasion by 50% uh, to the caster for three turns. Which is kind of smart because obviously the attack percentage can be used for the Anti-Cleave Arbiter Vildred, which is kind of how people play him. Uh, and the Evasion for 50% gives him some longevity for the old D-Gen counter Moonlight Dreamblade version of Arbiter Vildred. So I like that they have addressed both playstyles very neatly with this one Archdemon's Might buff. I think that's pretty cool. Um, Archdemon, or I should say Archdemon, Arbiter Vildred has been making somewhat of a resurgence lately in RTA. Um, because people have decided to build him slow on triple so torrent set in order to just like completely roll teams that don't have great bulk. And I think it's a, a, a cute way to play the character. I don't necessarily think it's like amazing, but people absolutely have been doing it lately. And I have uh, conveniently done the damage calc numbers for you. Uh, people usually play about 4,600 or more attack on Triple Torrent with over 300 crit damage. So this is kind of the floor you could expect. And I've already factored in the attack percentage increase on Archdemon's Might. So if you decide to adopt this style and you're on Alexis Basket, so you'll get uh, most likely an attack buff or a greater attack buff when you revive, right? You can uh, see here, we're looking at like 18k damage. Right, 22 or so with the soul burn. If you've got greater attack buff, in case you want to see here, uh, 20k or so to like an average character in the game, and like 25k or so on a soul burn. 
So pretty substantial damage. This is, of course, by the way, on Triple Torrent set. So pretty substantial damage uh, for the people who play him on, like, Destruction uh, or Speed Set RB like they do in the past. How good this is remains to be seen. Uh, I'm just excited that they're at least trying to do something with Arbor of Eldred. I don't know if this is enough to actually make him, like, really good like he used to be. I think this is enough to get him to have some use cases. But it, I don't really think this is enough for him to be, like, super meta. I mean, if he decides to start being more of a common reoccurrence, I expect Specimen Says will show up a lot more often in drafts, along with other Extinction units, right? Uh, Little Queen Charlotte, for example, uh, being another one. So I think overall this is like a good change. It at least like, in, it increases the viability and use cases of what people are already doing with Arbiter Builder, which I am okay with. Uh, and then here for Briar Witch Asaria, she got 10 speed on her EE, uh, and it increases the defense break chance on her S3 from 75% to 85%, which brings it more in line with characters like Ambitious Tywin. So the effect, not really caring about it too much. Like, it's great that we got it, right? But, like, it just puts it in line with other stuff that's already in the game. Uh, bring it from 75 to 85. The big thing here, and I always point this out every time we get speed on an EE, 10 speed EE makes you stand up and take notice, right? So, like, if we come over to uh, Cecilia Bot, for example, here, right? So, uh, let me go to Cecilia Bot here. Psh. Jump over here. We look over at the Heroes tab. Go here. Look at Rangers, Briar, which is Saria. So she's 114 speed. So now, with 10 speed, she's really moving as if she had like 122 or 123 base speed, which is Conqueror Lilia's speed. So. If you want to forego damage on your Briar Chisaria and just go like 300 speed now with uh, effectiveness and just go for the quick death break and just set up uh, Cleaves with the character, you can do it because the EE lets you do it. So yeah, 10 speed EE, kind of a big deal. Uh, so of the two, I think Briar Witch is probably the stronger one because, well, it's speed. And as I just showed you, you're schmoovin'. Like you're moving at like new moon luna speeds with this ee so uh definitely something to take notice of so the last thing that i want to talk about here we'll move past the packs which you know of course they're going to monetize luna she's the golden goose why would you not monetize her with packs uh this right here system right you can now acquire limited artifacts as well as artifacts with a purchase limit per account in a locked state can someone clarify in the comments what this actually means? Because I looked at this and I was like, does this mean I can buy like guiding lights and stuff? Or does this mean like I can get like summer limited four star artifacts that I might have missed in previous years? Like I'm very curious as to what this means. Does this mean I can get like upgraded dragon knuckles from the slime collab? Does this mean I can get exclusive equipments for characters from the Slime Collab? Because this is what I, I, I really want to know this. Like, this really should have been elaborated on because you look at this and you're just like, what do you mean I could get limited artifacts now? Like, I don't, I don't really quite understand this. So this is what I was talking about in the, the intro. This one, please, if you know what this means, let me know down in the comments section below. Would be wonderful. And let me know how you feel about the exclusive equipments as well as the exclusive equipment acquisition rate. Hopefully, I will see you tomorrow for the New Moon Luna pulls as well as the showcase. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.